Hey and welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial we're going to be recreating this ice cold logo reveal. Let's break the ice and jump in. Alright before we dive into the icy magic, if you enjoy this video please subscribe to the channel and maybe even give that like button a little tickle. It really helps me reach more people and share my love of creating educational content. Let's get started. So in After Effects I have a main composition where we're going to be creating our ice texture and reveal which is 4K, so 3840 by 2160. And then I also have two ice textures, ice texture one and ice texture two. I will drop the links in the description to pexels.com where I got these two textures from and you can download the same ones and follow along. I have both of these in compositions which match my main composition. And then finally we have our logo composition where we can have our logo or our text and this can be changed in the future. But back in our main composition, this is where we're going to be building our logo reveal. I'm going to drag in our ice texture one and ice texture two. And we want them in this order. We want ice texture one on top of the ice texture two. And on that top one, I'm going to change the mode to screen and then press T on the keyboard and drop the opacity to 70. And this is going to be the main ice texture we're going to be working with. So we can now drag on our logo composition on top and on the mode on our logo, I'm going to change this to multiply. Depending on the color of your logo, you might find a different mode fits better. You can even leave it on normal. It does work as well, but I'm going to leave ours on multiply. It works quite well for this color that I have. And the first thing we're going to do is in our effects panel, we're going to search for CC glass, and we're going to bring this onto our logo composition. And then up here under surface for the bump map, we want to select our ice texture two. I'm just going to zoom in so we can see what's happening here. And it is looking a bit wobbly at the moment. So we're going to drop the softness down to one. And then our height, let's leave at 25, but our displacement, let's up that to about 150. There you go. And that's, as you can see, is creating, if I just turn off our ice texture one, so we can just see the layer that is creating this uh, map. And where we're getting these sort of bubbles, that's where we're getting this sort of glassy displacement, which is sort of replicating ice as we want. So we'll turn that ice texture one back on. And we're also going to add another effect called displacement map. So if we can search for displacement map and bring this onto our logo as well. And this time for our map layer, we want to select our ice texture one. I'm just going to solo our ice texture one and our logo. And it's these sort of shards, these sort of crystals that we want to use as our displacement map. So that's why we've selected that layer. And we're just going to up the horizontal displacement. And you can see it's just displacing where these sort of jagged, crystally sort of bits are on our ice. Let's leave that around 60. And vertical, let's leave that at 10. Let's unsolo those. Now you can see we're getting these sort of jagged sort of displacements as if it was being refracted and affected by the ice above. But it is a bit too sharp and we can see some sort of like um, grain along our displacement. So I'm going to drop on a, let's do a fast box blur. Let's drag this underneath and let's see what one does. Yeah, okay, one's, one's fine. So well, that's all we need, just a fast box blur on one and that sort of just softens the edges for us. It does still look like it's just a logo dropped on and they put a multiply, which is exactly what's happened. And we do want this to sort of look like it's under the ice, a bit more bedded in. So what we're going to do is just highlight our texture one and texture two and duplicate and bring these on top of our logo. But we do want them the other way around. So we want to bring our ice texture one underneath our ice texture two. And our ice texture one, we want on screen, which it already is. I'm just going to turn off our ice texture two for now. So ice texture one, if I just turn it off and turn it back on, you'll see what's happened here. And then we do want to drop the opacity down to, let's say 25. Yep, yeah, that's fine. And then let's turn back on our ice texture two and let's turn this to overlay. Okay, let's just turn it off and on so you can see what's happened there. And again, let's drop this down to 25% opacity. Already that's looking much better. I'm just going to turn these off so you can see the before and then turn them on and you can see the after. So it's just sort of bedding it in so it looks like it's a bit more under the ice. 
I do want to see a bit more of these sort of crystally bits on top of our logo. At the moment, they do look quite flat and a bit non-existent on the, on the surface of the ice. And that is our ice texture one. So I am going to duplicate that one more time, bring that to the very top and solo that so we can see nothing but that layer. And let's bring the opacity up to 100. And I'm going to add a few effects onto this layer. I'm going to add a tint, bring this on. And that just makes sure it's just a black and white image. And then let's bring on a levels and bring this on. And what we're looking to achieve is just a black background with only the bits we want as white. So it's not gonna work perfectly because we've got a bit of a highlight here, as you can see. But if we can just bring this middle bit over to the right, just so it's mainly black with just these white crystally bits visible. And if I unsolo that, and let's put this to add, turn it off and on. And that is helping these pop over our logo just that little bit more and our logo now is looking like it is beneath the ice rather than just being dropped on top you can also while you're looking at the whole thing you can adjust our levels to sort of make them sharper or less obvious depends on how you want your logo to look and your ice to feel so i'm going to leave it about there and one more thing we're going to do is our logo is looking quite uniform quite flat and quite solid so we're going to just make it look like it's a bit more bedded in and a bit more uneven in its uh, in its frozenness. So let's start by adding a new layer and a new solid layer. Let's make sure it's the same size as our composition. Doesn't matter what color. Click OK. And on this layer, we're going to add the effect fractal noise. So we can search for fractal noise and bring this onto our solid layer. And let's just up the contrast and the brightness slightly now I bring the brightness down and transform up I'm just going to up that contrast a bit more and what we're looking for is something very similar to this we'll adjust this in a second a bit more but for now let's bring this to the bottom and turn it off because we don't need to see this at this moment and let's just solo our logo layer and on this layer let's add another effect this time called compound blur and bring this onto our logo and let's in our blur layer select our black solid nine i'm just going to call that noise just so i know which one that is go back to our logo and with our noise layer selected we need to make sure to the drop down to the right it's effects and masks and i'm just going to up this and as you see where our if i just turn back on our noise layer where it's white it's blurred and where it's black it is not blurred and anything in between is in between so this is the wrong way around for what I want. So I'm going to invert the blur and turn off our noise layer. And now we can, on our noise layer, we can just make any changes we want depending where we want our blur to be. So I'm just going to up our scale to around 500 and then just up the brightness a bit. So it was a bit too blurry in too many places. I think that's working fine. So I've got the contrast at 355 and our brightness at 35 and then our scale at 500. So back on our logo layer, I'm just going to maybe up our compound blur to 50. And I'm going to unsolo that so I can see how it's working in the scene. Yeah, it's not too bad, but I might even up that more to say 200, might be too much. That's not too bad. And then back on our noise layer, I think this, uh, scale might be too high so I'm going to drop that to 350 and then I might even drop the brightness down yeah and let's go there so these are all properties which we are going to keyframe and that's how we're going to create the reveal so while we're here let's just at the very beginning of our timeline let's add a keyframe to our contrast and brightness and then on our logo itself let's put a keyframe on the maximum blur and then I'm going to move forwards in our timeline to roughly six seconds or however long we want our reveal to be. I'm going to go with six. And then we can keyframe our compound blur down to 50 because we want it to be a bit blurred still. And then on our noise, let's just press U on our keyboard to bring up our keyframes. Our contrast, we want to, I think we want to drop this down. Let's just solo, let's solo our noise layer. And we want this to finish so that it is completely white. So I'm going to bring down the contrast. 
and then up the brightness to around there. So if we scrub through, we will see this change from our black and white cloudiness to just a pure white image. Let's just unsilo that. So you'll see at this point, here is our logo. So you'll see if I press J and K on the keyboards to jump between our first and second keyframes, there is how it's gonna start and there is how it's gonna finish. So at the start, I do actually want it to be a bit more blurry. So I'm going to up our compound blur to 350. And I might even drop our contrast slightly to, let's go 300. That's not looking too bad. So I'm also going to, on our logo layer, I'm going to keyframe our displacement. So I'm gonna go back to the very start and put a keyframe on our max horizontal and vertical displacement. Go back to our point where we want it to be revealed and drop these right down to 10 and then five. Depending on how crisp you want this to be, you might want these to be zero. You might even want to keyframe the glass uh, displacement. So that's at zero as well. And what I'm actually going to do as well is this, uh, these crystals on the top, I'm just going to keyframe the opacity as well. So the very start at 100 and let's drop that down to maybe 50. Yeah, just so they look like they melt off slightly towards the end. Yeah, it's getting there. There's a couple more things I'm going to do and on our logo, I'm just going to add a Gaussian blur to the whole thing. Let's go just so we have a an overall blur. I'm going to put that to maybe 10. That didn't do much. Let's go 50. Make a keyframe and then go to our six second mark and drop that down to 10. Now let's drop that down to zero at the end. And then also I'm going to press T and then keyframe the opacity. So at our six second mark, we want that to be 100. And then at the start, I might drop this down to maybe 80 and just see how that looks. And there you go, it looks like our logo is unfreezing slightly or maybe even coming up to the surface and being much more in focus than it was at the start. I'm going to just quickly put a nice ease in on all of our final keyframes. I'm just going to leave them as a standard ease in and then I'm just going to create a quick null and pick whip everything to it. And then at the very start, I'm going to make a keyframe and let's make that 115. And at the very end, let's drop that back down to 100, just so when we watch this through, put that up to 100%. So when we watch it through, it has a nice pull back. And that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed creating this cool effect. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and give that like button a little press. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.